Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to another wonderful time in God's presence. Yes. Uh, we bless the Lord. We're running to almost getting to the end of the month. So this is the 27th day of the month of uh, March. Why well, we thank God for everything he has done for us from the beginning of the year to this moment. We want to thank him especially for the things he also has done for us from the last Wednesday. You know, in other words, in the past one week. Our God is great. Our God is wonderful. Our God is faithful. He's a caring father. Indeed, a loving father. A faithful, the covenant-keeping God. There is no other God beside him. He alone is God. After him is him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I say after him is him. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So I thank God for you, and I pray that as we feast at his table, at his own feast, that God will command a blessing upon you, that the light of God will shine upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that the Lord will speak to your heart, speak to us, according to his will, that every one of you, yes, in this meeting, that none of us will leave this meeting without being blessed by God. He has assured us that those who diligently seek him will be rewarded. So I pray that your reward will locate you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Father, I want to thank you again at this moment, and I pray, my God, that Lord, you speak to our hearts. Let faith rise up in us. Wherever your children are, wherever they are at this moment, connecting to this meeting, my God, may your presence be awesome, mighty dear Lord. And I ask Almighty God that every blessing I package for each and every one. Let none of those blessings be denied or withheld from someone. You have brought us this far. You are the great Almighty God. Yes, Lord. You started the month with us. Now we are at the end of the month. But I trust you, King of Glory, that you have started this great and wonderful thing with us. You began a good thing with us, that you will perfect it in line with your will. For Lord, you said you will make perfect that which concerns us. Therefore, Lord, be glorified tonight. Be magnified tonight. Let somebody be healed. Let somebody be delivered. Let somebody be blessed. Let we be lifted up from the life of someone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let someone have a reason to glorify your name, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for using me. I'm just a vessel in your hand. All the glory and all the honor I give to you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So welcome again to another great and wonderful time in God's presence. We are going to continue with uh, the same subject. You know, believe and be established. Believe and be established. Believe and be established. It is the will of God for us to be established in every area of our lives. It is the will of God, hallelujah, for us to be established. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. It is the will of God for us to be established in every area of our life. It is the will of God for you to be established. It is the will of God, it is the will of God for you to come to the place of rest. He said there remained a rest, you know, which I promised to people, and we are the people who have promised this rest. Hallelujah. So it is my prayer that God will fulfill his word and bring you to that place of rest, and bring you to that place where you establish in every area of your life, in your spiritual life, your finances, your marriage, in your job, in your business, in your health, you know, because he said, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Thank you, Jesus. So I pray that the Lord will grant you to be established in every area of your life. Hallelujah. That you will not lack. You will not lack. You will not run short, you know, of the blessings and the promise of God for your life in Jesus' mighty name. So as we continue, last week, in fact, in the course of this very uh, series, we have seen, you know, we have seen indeed that if you believe, because the issue there is belief, the key word there is believe, that if you believe in the Lord, 
your God, if you believe, if only you can believe, if you believe in the Lord your God, he said you shall be established. And if you believe his prophet, you shall prosper. So the onus is on you. The, the onus is on you to believe or not to believe. But I will encourage you to believe so that you will be established. Because God cannot lie. I will encourage you to believe his prophets so that you will be established. You will prosper in line with his promise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Indeed, this is a life of faith. The life of faith is life of believing. He said the just shall live by faith. God has given his promise. And our lives should be governed by his promise, by his word. By his word. We shall live by faith, believing his promises. For he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that prays out of the mouth of God. So the word of God is the basis, you know, is the basis of our life or living on the earth. We have to live by the word of God. Hallelujah. He didn't say you shall not you shall not eat bread, you should not eat physical bread. He didn't say you shouldn't eat rice or salad or a beast or water or porridge. He didn't say, but he said you shall not live by those things alone. You shall live by the word of God. Hallelujah. Physical food is meant for your physical body. But you are not just a physical body. You are not just a you are not just a lump of meat. You are a spirit. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. You are a spirit. God is a spirit. So God wants us to be fed. Feed the man. They read you with the word. Hallelujah. So that you can live. So that you can be established. Praise the name of the Lord. Now we also have seen in scripture, you know, he said to believe because the life of faith, of course, believing God's word. And God gave us so many things that if we believe if we live in the, if we live the life of faith, these are the things that we will benefit. Okay, he said, if you believe, if you believe, then you can receive the promise of God. You can see the promise of God manifest in your life. You believe because the word of God, God has given us word promises in every area of our lives, every area. There is no area of your life that the word of God does not touch. There is a promise to address every issue in your life. So when you are in any situation of need, it becomes necessary that you go and look for those promises that addresses your situation. Believe those words and let God do what he has promised. Let that word of God concerning your need become flesh. Because that promise becomes what you need. Hallelujah. So you live by faith, by studying the word of God, and then doing those word of God, those promises, so that your life will be established. So that you will prosper. Thank you, Jesus. He said, if you believe... Not only shall you receive the promise of God, he says so that he says all things will be made possible to you. He says all things are possible to him that believeth. All things. He didn't say some things. All things are possible to him that believeth. So if you are a believer, I truly encourage you to believe. He said all things shall be possible to you. All things, not some. All things shall be possible to you. Thank you, our Lord. Now, believing also will make you, okay, will make you to experience signs, wonders, and miracles. In other words, signs and wonders will follow you as a believer. Because he said, and I said, and I said, he that believeth in my name he shall do this, my name shall do that. Amen. He says, signs shall follow them that believe. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall do this, they shall do that. If you believe, 
the word of God. If you believe in the sacrifice of Jesus, signs and wonder will become your portion. You'll be a doer of signs. You'll be a doer of miracles. Indeed, child of God, God has said already that you are a sign. Yourself, you are a sign. You don't need sign. You are already a sign. You are a worker of signs. You should be walking signs. God should be walking signs and wonders through you. Amen. Thank you, our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So if you believe, signs and wonders will follow you. As you go out to preach the word of God. Where? Not in your living room. You go out and preach the word of God outside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We have also seen from the scriptures some of the consequences of not believing or not mixing your faith with the word of God that you receive. So it is not just to receive the word of God. It's not just to go to church. It's not just to listen to God or listen to God's word or read, God's, uh, read the Bible. What you hear, you must be a doer of it. What you receive, you must be a doer of it. Now, if you hear and you don't do, of course, you will not be blessed. Because the scripture says it is not the hearer alone, but the hearer and doer of the word that is blessed. And the man who hears and does not do, the scripture says he is, is only deceiving himself. So you should not deceive yourself. You should be a hearer. It's good to hear, but it is very important that after hearing, you put to practice the thing that you have heard. So that you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. Thank you, our God. Hallelujah. Now, we also have seen in the scriptures that as the children of God in this world, it is not just Christianity. Christianity is not just about us and our personal needs. I was thinking about this very seriously, you know, because sometimes it is like the reason people go to church is because they have needs, it's because we have we, have, we need a miracle, we need healing, we need all this. Yes. Does God care about your need? Yes, he cares. But there is something that God cares much more about concerning you, your eternity. So God is interested in your your well-being here on earth. But to be honest with you, God is much more interested in your life after this world. But God is interested in your life here. How do we know? He says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. He didn't say when you see the kingdom of God is righteousness, that is just so you don't be pursuing the kingdom of God and say this world doesn't, no, you don't need anything in this world. Like somebody said, Jesus, you are the only one I need. No, you don't need only Jesus. You need money. You need clothes. You need accommodation. You need other things. Okay? So he's not the only one you need. But the truth is that when you have Jesus, you should have all. Hallelujah. So, he says, seek first his kingdom and his right, and these other things that you have need, these other things that the Gentiles are pursuing after, the food, the clothes, the money, the promotion, the children, the husband, and all of those things, accommodation, he said they shall be added unto you, because God knows the things you have need of. He knows you have need of food. He knows you have need of clothes. God knows that you have need of promotion in your place of work. God knows. You know you, 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 you need freedom from the enemy. Those who are pursuing you, those who want to destroy you, God knows you need divine protection. And God will protect you because He knows. In fact, He knows your enemies more than you know because of the truth. The truth matter that sometimes people you think that your enemies are may not be really your enemy. But we know we all have one common enemy, which is Satan. Do your praise through human beings. So God has promised you that they will fight against those who fight against you here on earth, not in heaven. There's no battle in heaven. He will contend with those that contend with you. Those who want to see you live your life the way God has planned for you. Those who those want, those want to see you live according to the will of God concerning your life. God will take care of them. God will fight them for you. 
God knows that you need peace. He knows you need peace. So that peace, Jesus is the peace. God will give you peace. And I even told you how you can get peace. He said the fruit of righteousness shall be peace. The work of righteousness. The work of righteousness shall be peace and quietness. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus Christ speaking, also, in the gospel, he said, nobody, no man, having left houses, fathers, this, this, or that, for his sake and for the sake of the gospel, that will not receive a hundredfold of those things he has left. Hundredfold, not in heaven, but here on earth. So God is interested about your life here on earth. And then in the world to come, eternal life. So God is interested in your prosperity here. So God is not saying you should serve him for nothing. God is not saying that you should serve him and die poor, die rich, and all those stuff. No. That's not the will of God. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray that your work with God will not be in vain. I pray your serving God shall not be in vain. Because he has said that if you obey and serve him, if you obey and serve him, if you obey and serve him, say you shall spend your days in prosperity, your years in pleasure. That's the promise of God. And God is faithful to his promise. If you obey and serve him, so it's not that when you serve God, you will die a poor man, you will die a defeated, panabited, somebody you know, wretched, you know, somebody put to shame. No, 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 no. God wants to use you as a signboard. That's why you are a sign, as a signboard to direct into his kingdom. God wants to use you to tell people, tell the world that he's good. That is why somebody like David will be able to say that, look, <laughs> he said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that walketh uprightly before God. Oh, taste and see. I was able to say that he was young and then he grew old. And within that period, he never saw the right of forsaking, nor the seed of the right of beg for bread. So God is not saying serve him and be poor. No, God is not saying serve him and be rich. God is not saying serve him and be and die poor and die defeated, die benefited, die, die destroyed by the devil. No. So God wants to serve him. But basically, number one thing, first things first, God wants you to seek his kingdom. Seek after his righteousness. Be more concerned about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And all of those things that human beings need, that you need, God will add them to you. Thank you, our God. Hallelujah. So it's not just about personal needs. Because the question we are going to ask ourselves, which we are going to see also in the scripture, according to the prayer of Jesus Christ, which he prayed for everyone, for his disciples at that time, and for those that we believe, like you and I that have believed, we're not there when he walked on the earth. But we have believed the gospel because the gospel has been written down and passed down to us. And I believe it. You believe it, I believe. Amen. So it's not about our personal lives. God left us here for his own, for his own good pleasure. In the fourth place, he created man for his own good pleasure. He created everything for his own good pleasure. The question a lot of people fail to ask themselves, is my life or are their life giving pleasure to God? Are they fulfilling the purpose for which God created them? Are you fulfilling the purpose for which God created you? He did not only create you, but he has redeemed you. We were meant to go to hell, but he sent his son Jesus to die for us. To redeem us. In order to further work, fulfill the purpose for which he created us, so that our life can give, give him good pleasure. God should look at you and be happy. Like our natural parents, if a child is doing well, a child, a child that is doing well gives the father joy, gives the father joy. 
a child that is doing well. You ask yourself, is your life giving God joy? Is your life giving God joy? Is your life making God happy? John the Beloved wrote in the book of First John. Is that First John? I think that is in Second John. Second John. Yeah, Second John. He said he heard, he was glad to hear that his children are walking according to the truth. He was glad to hear that his children are walking according to the truth. Are you living the life that pleases God? Let's look at John's Gospel, chapter 17. Verses 1 to 4, and I read verses 11 to 22. He said, This word spoke, spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life. He should give eternal life. Did you see that? That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know thee. Eternal life that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life. That is why I say, if you have Jesus, you have eternal life. You must know Jesus. You must receive him. Not just to know him from your head. You must know that he is the son of God. You must know that he is the author of eternal life. You must receive him as your Lord and your Savior. Because if you have him, you have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. See, and this is eternal life that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Praise the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ said he finished the work that the Father gave him to do. Are you first of all doing what God has committed into your hand? Are you doing it? Talk more of finishing it. Paul said, I have run the race, I have finished my course. Paul finished his own. Are you doing what God committed into your hand? Are you serving God? Or you are just going to church because you need a miracle? You are just going to church. You got born again because you believe that if you get born again, God will heal you. You got born again. If you get born again, you get a good husband. You get born again, you get a good house. Or life will be sweet for you here. You get born again, you possess your possession. Is that the only reason? Is that why you go to church? Is that why you are serving God? If that is the reason why you are serving God, please, I plead with you tonight that you should change your motive. Better change your motive. God is faithful. God is faithful. There is much more to Christianity than just you possessing your possession here on earth. There is much more to it. Eternal life. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go to verse 11. He said, And now I am no more in the world. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. You and I were still in this world, but we are not of this world, child of God. Now these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given to me, that they may be one as we are one. Okay. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. But it's not perdition. You shall not be lost. You will not die prematurely. By the grace of God, the Lord will shield you from every Satan manipulation. I pray that you will hold on to God to the end. You will not fall by the wayside, by the grace of God. I pray that the Lord will keep you, upholding you with the right hand of his righteousness. And every plan of the enemy to mislead you, then may the, Lord, may the Lord himself frustrate those plans. Every lie you have been hearing, listening to, to the intent that the enemy will take you away from the presence of the Lord, the Lord frustrate them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord frustrate them. You will not miss your way by the grace of God. The Lord keep you by his power. 
The Lord rebukes Satan, every foul spirit, every familiar spirit, every lying spirit, lying to you, whether directly or through his agents, in order to mislead you. May the Lord bring judgment upon them and destroy them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, our God. He said that the scripture might be fulfilled. And who was that son of perdition? That was Judas. That was the son of perdition. May you not fall away like Judas. May you not sell your birthright. May you not take because of filthy lucre, miss heaven. Judas, because of filthy lucas. So because of money. So Jesus Christ. For many pieces of silver. He that was one of the twelve lost his place. May your place not be taken by somebody else. May your office, your position, not be taken by somebody else. May your blessing not be taken by somebody else. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, our God. Hallelujah. Verse 13. And now I come to thee, and these, these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them thy word, and the whole world has hated them, because they are not of the world. Did you see that? Do you see yourself that you are not of the world? In the world, listen to me. That is why I said the, 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 the Bible says, first of all, he said, he said what? He said, if all men speak good of you, then he said, woe unto you. Woe unto you, if everybody is speaking good of you. Child of God. And again, if the world likes you, if the world likes you, because some people today now they like likes, like on social media. If you are doing anything and the world is liking you, ask yourself, first of all, it's good to be liked, but anything you are doing, ask yourself, this thing that I'm doing that people are liking me, giving me one, one million likes, is it in line with the will of God? Because child of God, your ways are supposed to be contrary to the ways of the world. The world should hate you. If the world doesn't hate you, there's a problem. <laughs> if the world don't hate you, there's a problem. The world should hate you. It's expected that the world should hate you. Why? Because you are not part of them. You are not one of them. Though you are in this world, you are not of this world. That is why the scripture says that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Friendship with the world. The moment you become a friend of the world, that the world begins to like you, then you become God's enemy. You become God's enemy. May you not become an enemy of God. Because can you contend with God? He said, what to them that contend with their maker? May you not find yourself in the place where God will consider you an enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our God. He said, the world had done what? Had hated them because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Jesus was not of this world. And you too are not of this world. I am not of this world. I'm not of this world. Hallelujah. If it pleases God for you, child of God, if it pleases God for you to be in any political position, if it pleases God, but let it be the will of God. Don't just, I want to be a politician, I want to seek a elected position office because of money. Because your eyes are there to just go there and become rich. No. If it pleases God for you to be a ruler, in your place, your village, or whatever, over your people, if it pleases God, make sure you are not going to go there to become part of the world or do those sacrifices and those rituals and ungodly things that they do. If only pleases God for you to be there, then God will give you grace. But listen to me. Listen to me. Jesus was to be crowned king here on earth. He avoided them. He, he, he escaped he escaped from them because he knew that his kingdom was not of this world. How can he be a king over the people? I'm talking about natural king, though he's the king of kings. 
He's the king of kings, but he avoided being crowned the king in this world. So you just have to be careful. Your office here on earth is what we are going to look at so that you don't miss heaven, so that your life will be pleasing to God. You will live your life in line with God's will. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 15. I pray not that thou should not take them out of this world. So God, God, he said, he, he, God should not take you out of this world. Because honestly speaking, heaven is better than earth here. Ordinarily, God would have saved us and taken us out of this evil, perverse world, crooked world, wicked world. God would have just saved us, get, you get born again, and it, it takes you away and takes you to heaven. Where there is no sorrow, where there is no mourning, where there are no tears, where there is no darkness, where there is no suffering, no disappointment. No sickness, no God will not taking you there, but God didn't take you away when you got born again. He left you here in this world. So know that purpose. If you miss it, you miss everything. If you miss it, you begin to chase shadows. Thank you, Jesus. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of this world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. And I pray may God keep you away from every manner of evil. May God protect you. May God defend you. May God preserve you. May God shield you from every evil that the enemy will seek to bring your way. May God shield you from evil people. May God deliver you from the company of evil and wicked people. May God connect you with people that love his kingdom, that love the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that love Jesus himself. May God connect you with such people, people that will help your faith in God. Not people that will discourage you and take you away from your from, from, from the ways of God. Thank you, Jesus. But that that should not keep them from the evil. They are not of this world, even as I'm not of this world. He repeated that again. You are not of this world. Let it sink into our head. We are not of this world. You need to declare to yourself, I am not of this world. I am not of this world. Because my Lord is not of this world. How can I be of this world when my master is not of this world? How can you be of this world when your Savior is not of this world? I am not of this world. I'm not of this world. We are not of this world. So there is no basis for you to compete in an ungodly way with the people of this world. We are strangers and pilgrims in this world. We are not going through this world, present world we are in, is like the wilderness journey of the children of Israel when they left Egypt. Egypt is symbolic of the kingdom of darkness. The wilderness is symbolic of this present world we are in. And the land of Canaan, the land of promise, that is symbolic of heaven. We are going to heaven. We are in heaven by faith. Now, in heaven by faith. You are not there. You are not there yet. We enter there when the Lord comes. If he, 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 if if we die, if you fulfill your number of age, your number of days on the earth, and you die, I pray you make heaven. But if the Lord comes in our day, I pray that you make the rapture. I pray that you be raptured. If the Lord comes in our day. But know a child of God that you are not of this world so that you will not be competing with the people of the world so that you will stop living like the world so that you stop copying the world. Stop copying the world. Stop copying the world. They are not of this world even as I am not of this world. Verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. That word of God sanctify through thy truth. The truth is word. He said his word is truth. How does that? So every word of God you receive and you obey, you do, you put to practice. That is the way you are being sanctified by the word. As you look into the mirror of God's word, it's just like looking into the mirror, natural mirror. It is a stain in your body. You want to be perfect. You want your clean to be perfect. You want to look perfect. So assuming you have dressed up and then you discover that somewhere either your tie or your shirt or somewhere is not well positioned, you know, as you look into the mirror, the mirror reveals that to you. There's a stain. Your powder, your makeup is not well done, you know, and all those stuff. As the mirror reveals them to you, you'll be a foolish person 
after seeing what you are looking, seeing about yourself in the mirror, and you know that is not how you want to look, and you leave it like that, of course, there will be a problem. But every wise person you doesn't look into the mirror so that you want to see whether everything is okay, the way, the picture you have. And when you see anything that is not in line, you, you rub it off or you adjust, you know, and all those ones so you can look perfect the way you are pictured in your mind you want to look. So God's word is a mirror. As we go to the word of God, anything, way and manner of life, that you are living, that the word of God is not speaking against, you drop it. That's how the word of God sanctifies us. You drop it. Don't say because I've been doing it before, we're going to do it. It doesn't matter. No, it matters. It matters. <laughs> it matters. Don't say we are doing it and nothing's happening to them. Therefore, you're going to do it. Then there's no repentance. There's no sanctification taking place in your life. You are sanctified by true obedience to the word of God. Holy God won't force you. No. He won't force you. So God's word becomes a mirror. So you examine yourself. You examine yourself based on the word of God. And whatever you find contrary to the word of God, you drop that in. You are being sanctified. Hallelujah. So say, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them. Did you see this? I like this. As thou hast sent me into the world. God sent Jesus Christ into the world. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, by the determinate counsel and the full knowledge of God, they were taken and crucified. He didn't just come. In the book of Hebrews, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said God sent him into this world to do what? To save humanity. To die for us. God sent him here to take your place and my place on the cross. The Bible says you were made sin with your sin and my sin. He died a shameful death. And God raised him up from the dead. God sent him into this world to save the dying world. The dying world. For all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody that came into this world from Adam fell short of the glory of God. For everybody sinned in Adam. So he came to take away that sin. Now, having paid that supreme price of death on the cross, defeated the devil, took the keys of hell and of death out of the hand of Satan, swear principles and powers of darkness. Redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, rose up and went to heaven. And he seated right now the right hand of majesty on high. When he was living, he had finished paying the price. The gospel will be heard. People must hear that somebody came into this world to die. So he left us here on earth to do that job. Angels will not do it. So we are here on earth to do that job of taking this gospel, the gospel of his death, sacrifice, his death and resurrection to the world to tell the world that somebody called Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, paid the price for our freedom. Pay the price so that we will not go to hell. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The Bible said the testament of our peace were laid upon him. And by his strength we are healed. Yes. That Jesus died so that we can be, we can live a healthy life on the earth here. But don't forget, eternal life is the number one thing. But he also was made poor so that we can be rich here on earth. He was made poor for us. You don't love yourself more than God loves you. You don't desire to be wealthy or to be rich more than God desires. If God does not want you to be rich, Christ will not have been made poor. God made him to be poor so that you can be rich. Seek God. Follow God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, so he has sent us into the world to do what? To preach the gospel. He has sent you. Are you doing that work? He finished the work. 
God sent him. He said, what God gave to him, they have finished it. Now he has gone back to heaven. Are you doing what is assigned to you? Are you saving? Are you preaching the gospel? Are you winning souls? He said, for that sake, I sanctify myself, that they also may sanctify. Now, neither pray I for this alone. Hear this. Neither pray for this alone. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Are there people believing on the Lord Jesus Christ through your preaching? It is you that is supposed to carry the gospel to preach to people. You have been saved. Heaven is not for you alone. He didn't die for you alone. He died for the whole world. He had left you here on earth for this purpose. When you miss it, you miss everything. Your present will be in vain. If you miss this thing, you miss it all. You are not just here to possess possession. We like the scripture upon Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. The heart of Jacob shall be. Yes, it is true. You possess your possession. But primarily, basically, you should be preaching the God because the reason God left you here on earth in this wicked and crooked world, even though God will protect you, God will defend you, He will shield you from evil, He will fight your battle. He left you here so that you can do the work of preaching the gospel to people. So don't just go to church because you want to hear the word, you want to learn the principle of prosperity, you want to hear the seven steps, the seven keys, the keys, the ten keys or eleven keys or whatever to riches. No. No. You go to worshiping. You go to learn of his ways. To make your ways, align your ways with his ways. Hallelujah. But basically you are here. Your office, your place of business, road, anywhere, marketplace. Listen to me. There are people out there that don't know the, that don't know the Lord. You are to preach the gospel to them. You are to pray for the dying world. That is why he said you are a sign. You are the one that you are the one to direct. A sign, a sign body is what directs people to where they are going. People who don't know the road to heaven, you are the one to direct them. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 21. That they all may be one, as thou father art in me, and I in thee that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou givest me, I have given them. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your glory, that they may be one as we are one. So, child of God, what are we saying? The Lord has paid the price. He has redeemed us back to God. But listen, he left us here and gave to all the word of reconciliation and the means of reconciliation. He gave you the word to preach. You are in a ministry. You have a ministry. Every child of God is a minister. Every child of God is a minister of the gospel. The scripture said that we should no longer live unto ourselves, but unto him that loved us and died for us. We are seeing that. Therefore, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, go in obedience into the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom of God to everyone. Go as you go, heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead in the name of Jesus. He has given you commandment to do, he has empowered you. <laughs> Don't be afraid, go. You are not the one going to raise the dead. You are not the one going to, you are not the one going to heal the sick. Yours is to just pray, yours is to lay hands. Let God do his own. You pray for somebody, the person is not healed, it's not your business. And there's no, no, no place for it, no, no need for you to say, ah, oh, I pray the prayer. What if I pray? It doesn't happen. Uh -uh. Are you a healer? You are not the one. It's God that heals. Yours is just pray and go. But believe. Just believe. Believe. Just believe. The person I pray for also must believe that this person that is praying for me, as he prays for me, may God heal me. Let all the glory go to God. I say, let all the glory go to God. Child of God, believing alone will not help you. Believing and doing the word 
is what will help you. It's what will get you established. It's what will get you mature spiritually. Therefore, you should be kingdom-minded, child of God. Be kingdom-minded because we are here. You are here on earth. You are here in this world, not on this world. You are just a stranger. You are here, left here by God to do the work of the kingdom. So be kingdom-minded. Be mindful of your home. <laughs> be mindful of your home. Be mindful of where you came from. You are from heaven. That is not the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So be mindful of your home. Be mindful. I said be mindful of heaven. Be mindful of the kingdom of God. And then speak about the glory of the kingdom of God. Talk about the things of God. Get your mind occupied. The Bible says if you are dead in Colossians chapter 3, say if you be dead and are risen with Christ, say set your affections on things above and not on things beneath. Let your affection be on things above. He said where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. He said for you are dead and your life is seen with Christ in God. Your life is seen with Christ in him. He said, mortify therefore your affections, your members which are here on the earth. Mortify. Deaden. Let your body become dead because a dead fish cannot swim. Let your flesh be dead to immoralities, to sin. Let your flesh be dead to all of those things. You are a child of God. You are the righteousness of God. You are a holy brother, a holy sister. So let heaven be in your mind and talk about the glorious majesty of God's kingdom. Psalm 145, hear this, verse 10. He said, all thy works shall praise thee. All thy works shall praise All the works of God shall praise God, O Lord. Thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. To make known to what intent? He said, to make known to the sons of men his mighty ass and the glorious majesty of his kingdom, thy kingdoms and everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endure throughout all generations. He said, of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Who is bringing that increase? You. Are you, adding, are you bringing about increase in God's kingdom? Since you got born again, how many people have you added to increase the kingdom of God? <laughs> Because of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. How many people have you gotten saved? Or you are just coming to church because you want, okay, you just want the blessing. God will bless you, child of God. But seek for his kingdom. Seek for the increase of his kingdom. Because God said of his increase of his own kingdom, there shall be no end. God is expecting you to be one of those who are bringing about the increase of God's kingdom here on earth. Hallelujah. He said you didn't choose him. He chose you and ordained that you go and bear fruit. God wants more fruit from you, fruit of souls, fruit of righteousness from you. John 15, 16. I read easy translation, this easy translation. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I chose you to go and to make plenty fruit. That is easy translation. To make plenty fruit. That kind of fruit, okay, that kind of fruit will continue always. That kind of fruit, your fruit should continue always. For that reason, the Father will help you with anything that you ask him. If you ask him anything, anything in my name, he will do it for you. I mean, <laughs> you know, some of us when we're growing up, you remember, even today, some people say, your father will have told you, say, if you pass this exam, or if you do this, I'm going to do this thing for you. If you do this thing, I'll do this for you. Your father that was not faithful, or that is not faithful, as faithful as the Most High God, a natural man, many times they fulfill their promise. When you, when you, when you pass that exam, they do something, they, 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 they give to you what they promise. Or when you do carry out that assignment, they promise that if you do this thing, I'm going to do it. They'll be able to do it. How much more will God Almighty fulfill his promise? 
He said, he, he, you didn't choose him. He chose another and you can be afraid. When your, when your fruit should remain, then come back to him and say, Father, I need this. You promise me. And then I come and ask you, you will do it for me. But many times, we only go to ask. You don't go to ask when they have not done anything. I only just to go and ask. Every time we're asking, I need money. I need husband. I need a wife. I need children. How many souls have you won? Have you added so that the kingdom of God will increase? And those souls are remaining. How many? But we are quick to ask the Lord. Child of God, it is not to say you are, God is not to condemn you, but to let you know that the reason God kept you here on earth is for the purpose of which you pray the gospel. Angels won't do it. This is the gospel. You believe God, you are healed already. You believe God, you are rich. You believe God. Believe God. This is what God said to you. I say, who I believe our report? Who report you believe? Do you believe the report of your flesh? There's no money in your pocket. Is that what you are believing? Your body is feeling sick. Is that what you are believing? No, what are you believing? Believe God's word. Believe what God says that you are. And declare it, I am who God says that I am. Allow God to honor his word. But be doing what God asks you to do. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. <laughs> God cannot lie. If you believe him and do what he has asked you to do, you shall be established. You will prosper. Signs and wonders will follow you. <laughs> you understand that? Signs and wonders will follow you. But if you don't believe, the Bible says you shall be damned. You will not receive anything from him. And you also will not be established. If you don't believe. The Bible said those who fell in the wilderness were those who didn't believe him. May you not fall in this wilderness. May you not die prematurely because of unbelief. May you not, may you not remain in that state of financial difficulty because of unbelief. May you not stay below because God's promise that you shall be on top and not at the bottom. May you not be at the bottom because of unbelief. May you believe God so that you will be who God ordained that you should be. He said you shall be on top. You shall be first and not the last. You are healed already in your body. You are blessed already. Believe you are blessed. You are not a beggar. You are not among the masses. Don't count yourself among the masses. They won't keep poor people. You are not a poor man. You are a rich man. God said you are rich. So believe you are rich. How good? Go have... Listen to me. God promised to bless the work of your hands. Have a business. Get a job. Get something you are doing. Get your hands to do something. God will bless and tell God, God, you said you will bless the work of my hands. So these are the things my hands are involved in. Bless it for me. Bless my job because this is the place I'm working. Let me find favor before my employers. Let my service in this company be acceptable to my employers. My promotion will come from you. Touch them to promote me in this company. But serve the Lord, child of God. You are not just there to get promoted and enjoyed comfort and all of those things. You are here on earth to do the will of God. So believe God. Dare to believe God. I challenge you, child of God. Dare to do what to believe God. Believe him and you shall see all things made possible unto you. The scripture said, look at what the scripture said. He said to him that believeth, all things have been possible to him. Why? Because he's believing on him with whom all things are possible. It's only with God that all things are possible. So when you believe on God with whom all things are possible, all things have been possible unto you. Because you don't have the power to say, God, because I believe this is God that will honor his word. Amen. There's nothing too hard for God to do. There's nothing. Believe God. Yes. Believe God. God will lift you up. The word of God can we take you to where God wants you to be. Starve your doubt. Starve your doubt. Starve your unbelief to death. Don't be a doubter. Don't walk in unbelief. Your own should be had. God said it. Yes. It is forever settled in heaven. I believe it. And it's working for me because it must work for you. If God said he's watching over his word to perform it. 
If God has said it, <laughs> it is forever set in Why? Because the word of God is forever settled in heaven. Yours is to believe it and wait for it to happen in your life. Just stand on it and be waiting and confessing. The word of God works. God is faithful. Don't wait until tomorrow. Practice makes perfect. Start believing from today if you have not been believing before. Start believing. Don't look at people who say, I believe it didn't work. Don't follow. The Bible says, be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Look for those who believe and they got the promise. Don't follow those who say, ah, I tried it before. It didn't work. Leave, abandon those people. Connect yourself with people that believe. I'll tell you, ah, this word of God is sweet too. This word of God works. The word works. The word of God works. God is faithful. Look for people who, who will tell you that God is faithful. That God is not a liar. Look for those and follow them. Yes. Look for those and follow them. Practice made perfect. So when you begin to believe now, it doesn't matter. Begin to believe you are healed. That's headache. Let faith take it away. Believe God and let that head. That pain. Let, believe God. Start believing God, even with these little things. These little things. Your faith will grow to deal with greater things. Because the faith that will cast out, that will heal your headache, is not the same faith that will heal you of, uh, that, will, that will heal you of, uh, that will heal some, not you, that will heal somebody of cancer. Start with little things. David had to deal with the, the, the beer and the lion, the lion and the beer. He believed God and God gave him victory. He was then, that was where he was able to deal with Goliath, a giant. So start dealing with the, 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 the lions and the bears. The little thing, believe God for those things. Believe God, believe God. As you go out daily, believe God that you go out in peace and return back home in peace. Believe that no evil will befall you. Believe that God will put food on your table. Believe you will not be stranded anywhere. Believe God. Believe God. All the little things. Believe God. And then as you begin to experience God, as you begin to experience God, then you begin to increase your faith. And begin to believe God for bigger things. Believe God for bigger things. Don't just begin to believe God for big things when your faith has not even given you any small thing. You understand? That is why you must not, you must not, you must not throw your conscience away. Don't throw your conscience away. The Bible says some people who have thrown their conscience, they may shift record their faith. Allow your conscience to, to guide you. There are things your faith will not be able to carry. No problem. Start with little ones. Start with the small things first. You will grow. Yes. Let your faith give you a motorbike. If you are not, don't even have it. Even if you don't have a bike now, let your faith give you. Start with a motorbike. Then grow. Your faith can give you a second-hand car. Yes, no problem. You grow from a second-hand car to a new car. You grow from a new car to driving the, you know, a post, the post car that you desire. Start from, let your faith give you one bedroom. Let your faith give you one bedroom. From one bedroom, your faith, let your faith furnish it for you. Let your faith take you to two bedrooms, to three bedrooms. Your faith will give you your own house. So start believing, start believing. Don't doubt. Don't walk in doubt. Keep that doubt. Follow people that have believed. Look at people who have believed and are enjoying the blessings of God. That's why he said, follow faith. Follow the who through faith and people like Abraham. They get the promise. Hallelujah. You want to see miracles. You want to see people. You want to go out and preach the gospel. Don't be afraid. <laughs> go out and preach the gospel. Know that this is the reason God left you here on earth. To be a preacher. You are a preacher. You are a soul winner. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You don't need a sign. You are the one to keep people the sign, to show people the sign to heaven. You're already, you already a sign. <laughs> God will honor his word in your life. Hallelujah. I say God will honor his word in your life. In your mouth, God will honor it. Assure yourself, therefore, now, child of God, assure yourself and declare now. Declare it. Declare that I'm a believer. Amen. That you are a believer. And you are filled. You are filled and charged with the power of the Holy Ghost. Declare it. I'm a believer. You declare I'm a believer. Say I'm a believer. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm a believer. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. 
Say it loud. That's why they believe. Declare it that signs and wonders follow you. Let your faith. Keep that fear. Keep fear first of all by declaring that you. Keep that fear by declaring who God said that you are. I'm not afraid. God has not given me the spirit of bondage again to fear. Yes. I'm a believer. <laughs> signs and wonders are following me. God has given me the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Declare it according to the word of God. Yes, that I you are a believer. I'm a believer according to the scripture in Mark. Yes, that if you drink any poison or eat any deadly things, shall not hurt you. Yes, declare that no weapon from against you shall prosper. Why? Because you are a believer. I believe in God's word. My father said that no weapon from against shall prosper. Therefore, no weapon from against shall prosper. Because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm a believer. I believe God's report. I believe that I am who God said that I am. I believe I have what God said that I have. Yes. I know who my enemies say that I am. I know who people say that I am. I am who God said that I am. Unless what people are saying that I am is in line with what God is saying, then I believe it. But otherwise, <laughs> I refuse to be who God, who people want me to be. I refuse to be who Satan wants me to be. I'm a child of God. I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm a light. I'm a fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Child of God, declare it that you are a believer. You, I cast out devils. Yes. Devils obey me. I cast them out because I'm a believer. Yes. I'm a believer. I trample upon serpents and upon scorpions because, child of God, there are serpents and scorpions out there. Serpent and scorpions of human beings. Serpent and scorpions of real serpent and scorpions. They are out, out there. They are human beings that are serpent and scorpions. You will trample upon them by the grace of God. You are a believer. They shall not harm you. They are out there in your place of work. They are out there in the marketplace. They are out there in your company. They are out there in your compound. They are out there in your family. Serpent and scorpions. You will trample upon them. They shall not harm you. There are witches and wizards. You will cast them. You will bind them. You bring God's judgment upon them. Every tongue that rises up against me, I judge, I condemn because I'm a believer. I believe God's promise. I believe the word of God. God said every tongue that will rise up against me in judgment, I condemn. Right now, I judge and I condemn every tongue that is speaking against any area of my life. Speaking against my prosperity, my health, my joy, my, pro my business, my, jo my marriage, my, my properties. I judge and I condemn them. And I command every curse they directed over and against my life. Any of my life to return back to the sender. Because the wicked shall be destroyed by their own wickedness. God has given you that authority. Declare it. I'm a believer. Therefore, I stand in God's presence and I send back every curse back to the sender. Declare it, child of God. Shall be well with you. Declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. Declare that you lay hands on the sick and the sick shall Look at your palm. Don't look at your palm. These hands are blessed. These hands are anointed. I lay these hands on the sick and the sick recovers. I'm not the one that heals the sick. I only obey my father. And when I obey my father, I lay hands on the sick. The sick recovers. My God heals the sick. Yes. Because I'm a servant of the Most High God. I'm an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So, child of God, declare it tonight. Believe it. Declare that belief. You are a believer. Because you are a believer in the Lord. Declare you are blessed. You are fruitful. You are fruitful. You are fruitful and your fruit remains. I bear fruit and my fruit remains because I'm a believer. I bear fruit and my fruit remains. Yes. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a believer. The Lord said, I am the light of this world. Therefore, I am light. I don't walk in darkness. I walk in the light. I'm covered with the light of God. I believe that I'm the light of this world. I believe I am shining. No darkness can cover me. No darkness can cover me. The light of God upon my life destroys every form and appearance of darkness. Yes. I'm a believer. Yes. That the Lord is my shield. The Lord is my shield and my buckler. Yes, the Lord is my shield. He shields me from the arrows of the wicked. He shields me from every curse. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why am I a believer? I am a believer. Declare, child of God, my hands are blessed. These hands are blessed. You see that song? My hands are blessed. Anything I touch, 
Anything, like anybody I talk shall be blessed. Declare it. I'm a believer. My hands are blessed. Any business I put this hand shall prosper. Any hands, anything I put this hand to do shall prosper. Yeah, why? Right, because I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Yes. I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. Yes. The grace of God is upon my life. The grace of God is upon my life. Yes, because I'm a believer. Yes. I'm a believer that the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. I believe the Lord is my strength. I'm not strong in myself. The most high God is my strength. The Lord is my peace. I believe it. The Lord is my peace. Yes. The Lord is my peace. I go out in peace and return back home in peace because I'm a believer. Yes. The peace of God is my portion. The Lord is my peace. Jesus is my peace. He's my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Yes. Yes. Mountains give way. Waters give way. Yes. Before me, because I'm a believer, I'm not alone. I don't go out alone. The Lord is with me. The Lord goes out with me. The Lord, the Lord is in me. Greater is the Lord that is inside of me. The most I got, the creator, is inside of me. Therefore, I'm not afraid of any being, of any creature, because greater is the Lord that is in me and with me than the devil that my enemies are out there in the world. All those who gather together against me, by the word of God, I command all of you to fall and be scattered, because thus is the Lord. I believe the word of God as it is written, that you will surely gather together against me, but not by the not by the authority of my God. Every one of you gathering anywhere, whether in this country where I am, whether in my native country, whether in my village, the community, wherever in the water, anywhere you gather against me, I say be begin to fall and begin to be broken to pieces according to the word of God. I believe that promise of God. I say you will surely gather together against me, but not by him. All of you gather together against me and say, fall and be broken to pieces in Jesus' mighty name. I believe God. I believe God. I believe in the Lord my God. I believe in his prophets. Therefore, I am established and I am prosperous. <laughs> yes. I am established in every area of my life because I believe in the Lord my God. I believe in his word. I believe his prophets. I am prosperous. I am a servant of God. I'm a minister of the gospel. I'm an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. Ambassador of Christ on it. I'm a witness. I'm a witness of the fact that the word of God works. I'm a witness of the kingdom of our God. The Lord that anointed me with his Holy Ghost. He has anointed me with his power. Yes, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bear fruit. I'm a soul winner. I win so I direct people by the grace of God into God's kingdom. And they remain in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. God bless the Lord, child of God. Bless the Lord. Give God praise and give God glory. Yes, for every promise you have given that you are standing upon and God is watching over and making flesh in your life because the word of God shall become flesh in your life. I say the word of God become flesh in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Child of God, we come to the end of this series. Believe and be established. And as you continue to believe, may you be established in every area of your life. As you walk in the faith of God, as you walk in faith in God's word, may the word of God become flesh in your life. May you be a living testimony. May you, may you be a, a, a proof producer, a living proof that God is faithful, that the word of God works. Hallelujah. May you be a living proof. May people see God in you. May you be a sign indeed. May you be a wonder indeed that people will see and say, wow, I see God in you. Ah, your God is wonderful. Your God is awesome. Your God is powerful. I'm going to serve your God. I'm going to worship your God. May people see your God in you. May people see what God has done for you. May people see what God is doing for you. In a, may people see God in you and flee from you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you will not die premature. You will fulfill your destiny. You will not fall on the wayside. You will enter into that kingdom of God. Finally, by the grace of God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go and shine. Your light has come. Rejoice. He said, arise, shine. 
stand up and arise. Shine. It's God said, your light has come. The glory of God risen upon you. You shall not walk in darkness. The darkness of economic adversity. The darkness of, of famine. The darkness of insecurity. The darkness of barrenness. The darkness of disappointment shall not cover you. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord destroy every form and appearance of darkness. Over and around you, over and around the environment. The children of Israel, they were in Goshen. There was light in Goshen, but there was darkness in Egypt. There may be darkness in the nation, but the Lord is your light and your salvation. You walk in the light of God. The darkness that is covering the nation shall not cover you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will rejoice in the power of God. You will rejoice. Yes. You will rejoice in the glory of the Lord in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a favored child of God. You declare it. I am blessed. I am favored by God and graced by God to be who God ordained me that I should be. Not by my power, not by my might, yes. But by the spirit of the living God, all those who rise up against me, I declare them destroyed by fire. Because God has made me a fire. And my God is a consuming fire. By the fire of God, that God has clothed me with, because God said, What? Well, Kalina Kadusto Prade. He said, He maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame in fire. You are a flame of fire, child of God. You are a fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your enemies are the trouble. I say, Burn them. Let them burn. Let them be consumed. They become ashes. Yes. He said, The house of Jacob shall be a fire. The house of Joseph shall be a flame. The house of Esau shall be the, shall be what? Shall be the struggle. Child of God, may your fire consume every power of darkness and all of those who are rising up against you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is well with you, child of God. I speak peace of God upon your life. Whatever God has not planted in you, I say this, I be rooted and believe it. Believe it. For thus said the Lord, every tree my father has not planted shall be rooted out. I command every Iroko tree, every Adba tree, every Walnut tree, every Ogrishi, every, every cedar that God has not planted, every herb, green grass that God has planted in your life, in your world, I command them to wither up. I command them to be destroyed, rooted out, and be consumed by fire. In the mind of the Lord Jesus, every tree bearing useless fruit in your life, I command them their fruit to wither up and be rooted and destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord defend the child of God. I speak peace over your life. Go and be who God ordained you to be. <laughs> go and prosper in Jesus' mighty name. I say go and prosper. Go and succeed. Go and glory. Go and be fruitful in the mighty name. I say in the name of Jesus, be it unto you according to your faith in God's word, in God Almighty that is able to do all things for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, child of God, we come to the end of this series. And I want to thank the Lord and the Lord Almighty God. Yes. The faithful and covenant keeping God. Who confirm the word of his messenger will confirm his word in your life. And make you a living testimony. And make you a proof producer. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be a sign to direct you into God's kingdom. Yes, may, may the word of the Lord be, be, be powerful in your mouth. May the word of God be powerful in your lips. May it be fire, may it be hammer that will break every rock to pieces in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, child of God, God bless you. Make sure, know always, bear in your mind that this purpose, this is the purpose we God has left here on earth. To win shows, to bring about increase of his kingdom, because of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Be part of those adding to the kingdom of our God. Be part of them. Be part of them. And God will bless you. Ask him whatever you want. In the name of his son, according to his promise, he will do it for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so as we come to the end of this, I want to remind you this weekend we'll have our Seasons of refreshing coming up on Friday through Sunday. Friday, two sessions. Uh, Saturday, two sessions. On Sunday, uh, it's uh, celebrating, celebrating of Jesus, celebrating Jesus. Hallelujah. The final day. Hallelujah. The theme of this year's season of refreshing is the abundant life. Hallelujah. Oh, I invite you, please make sure you don't 
misses. Plan to attend, whether online or on site. But if you are in Lego, make sure you will attend on site, on ground. Be there. God will bless you. You will not regret that you came in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, God. So I look forward to seeing you in those days. And as you are coming, come expecting. Come in faith. Hallelujah. God will bless your coming in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we leave, I want to encourage you to give towards the work. Give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together. God will cause men to give back unto you. You will not miss or lose your reward. Yes. Every seed you are sowing, I pray the Lord that they be watered. Yes, and they bring forth in abundance, 60 folds, 30, 60, 100 fold, according to the promise of God. Hallelujah. And every word of God you are standing on, may the word of God become flesh in your life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, I pray for everyone giving now, that Lord, you will bless their seeds. Prosper them. Give them durable riches. You have blessed us already, O oh God. Let their blessings manifest. Let people see you in every area of the life of your children. Papa, whoever amongst your children tonight that came to this meeting or have heard my voice being sick, that sickness I cause it to die. I speak healing. I speak deliverance. I speak peace upon the life of everyone in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for answer to this prayer. Thank you for blessing your children. Thank you for touching them to give back to them. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take all the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, don't forget, Wednesday next week, we meet again. But by the grace of God, we're going to be looking at something different. Hallelujah. So God bless you for being part of this meeting tonight. Share the word. Receive grace. Receive strength. Go and declare the kingdom of God. Go and declare and preach the gospel to people. And may God use you to increase his kingdom on earth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. So I see you guys this weekend. Hallelujah. So until then, I want to say to you, remain blessed. Continue the blessing of God. Stay safe. Yeah, God keep you safe. According to the prayer of Jesus Christ, God keep you from every manner of evil in Jesus' mighty name. And above all, may you stay rapturable. Hallelujah. You are not of this world, even though you are in this world. Keep away from ungodly people. And may the Lord keep you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.